Hey guys, I'm Louise and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be potting up some moss propagations. But before we get into that, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video for some more planty content. So I have got a ton of propagations. They are Hoyas and I've got a mistletoe cactus. And I also have a little Maranta cutting, which I took in a video which I made a while back um, where I propagated, like mass propagated both of my Marantas. But yeah, this one is just so adorable and it has grown so many roots and they're so long and it's given me secondary roots. So I'm going to be potting that into this Maranta, which I have potted up a while ago and it was a cutting as well. So yeah, let's just get into it. So I'm just gonna start with this Maranta because I, it's just very easy. So I don't really need to do much, but look at these roots. You can definitely see, but look at that. It is absolutely crazy. And if I just zoom in, you can definitely see, look at those little tiny secondary roots. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely crazy so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to take out some of the gravel that is in here and i'm going to take it out from the front don't need to take much out just a little bit so i can put this little cutting in nicely and this is like the easiest way to just put cuttings like rooted cuttings straight back into a plant so as you can see I have made a little space and I'm just going to grab my trusty pen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the pen in the soil and just go all the way down to the bottom of the pots now the only reason I'm doing that is because this cutting has quite long roots so just to make sure I'm not crushing the roots and the roots have enough space I just make a hole and then I pop this cutting it's quite difficult to do this one handed there we go oh no now a stone's gone down okay it's quite difficult to okay I think I might have to leave that stone which is at the bottom because I can't get it anyway and then you just pop the cutting in like so as you can possibly see and then all I just got to do left is just bring some of that soil just so I can I need to put some new soil in there Ouch. Got in. gravel is literally going into the hole and it's really really annoying me okay and now I'm just going to very carefully put this root into the hole. So now I'm just going to grab a bit of soil from the little bag I have down here full of soil. Grab the tini tiniest handful. Then I'm just going to fill that space in. And there we have it. So I have just potted the little cutting in front of this big one, as you can see, and it is planted in there very nicely. So all I'm gonna do now is just pop the gravel back on like that. So I'm gonna press it down just to make sure that no flies can get into the gravel because fungus gnats are so annoying. Like. They are really 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 annoying and there we go so we have now successfully potted up a nice little maranta cutting which will hopefully grow big and strong with the other cutting we have in here 
All right, so now we're gonna get on to putting up all of these guys. It's absolutely crazy how much I have. Like, honestly, like you can see some of like the new growth. I've like left some of these guys and they've just given me new growth, like left, right and center. And it's just absolutely crazy. So I, at first I'm just going to start taking off the moss. So I have just dumped them all in this little like plastic lid from one of the propagation boxes. I've literally just like emptied out like two, three boxes. I do have a Hoya fungi cutting um, which is still rooting. I don't think it has enough roots, like long enough roots for me to pot up. So I'm just going to leave it. I've got one already potted up anyway, so it's not really a problem. So yeah, let's do that. So I'm just going to take you through the process. So this cutting here is a Hoya Australis Lisa cutting. And as you can see, I did just pick these cuttings straight out of the box. And you can already see that there are so many roots. There's like one big long root there, like another down here. And I'm just going to carefully just take away the, um, the moss, just being very gentle, making sure I don't break any roots because these roots are going to be quite um, delicate as they're quite thin. Um, so yeah, I'm basically just going to take away the moss from the roots. I think I might have accidentally like um, left like the moss a bit too wet because it's starting to actually grow moss there. As you can see, like it does happen sometimes. It's not like a big problem though. Um, but yeah, it can happen. So just make sure when you um, when you wet your moss, you don't leave it like sogging because that's obviously what I accidentally did. And this is all new to me, so in the future I'm basically just going to make sure that if I do accidentally like soak the moss too much, just to leave the box open for a few days so we don't like get like bugs or anything like that or like moss, like actual like moss, green moss form on the sphagnum. There's just so many roots, it's crazy. Like, look at that. So I've just successfully taken all the moss. Like, there is so much moss. But look at all these roots, it's absolutely crazy. So that's my Hoya Australis Lisa. The next we're gonna do is this one. And I believe that this cutting is a Hoya Longifolia. I think that's the name because I think I have the Wayetii up there. So I believe this is the Longifolia. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it is quite a strange name. Hoyas, like, Hoyas do have like some strange names and it's like pretty cool and crazy at the same time, you know. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to take the moss off of the roots. And the best way you can tell if um, your cuttings have significant like amount of roots is if you just lift the, them up by either like the stem or a leaf or wherever you've got it from or even like a node if you just did like a, a wet stick like just, just from the stick whatever. Um, just like check if it has substantial roots. Um, the moss will actually come up with it because the roots have grappled onto the moss. Um, to grow in obviously so I've taken the moss off these roots and look how many roots there are it's absolutely crazy like wow and I've just noticed on this one there is tiny baby growth right here can you see that it's quite difficult to show there we go tiny baby growth right there absolutely crazy so this is the hoya longifolia i'm definitely not going to put this anywhere near my way to eye cutting uh, and plant because i know for a fact that i will get them mixed up because they look so similar so the next two are my mistletoe cactus so i know i said in a while back that um i really hate cacti and succulents and yes i do have a um variegated bear paw succulents um, that was free and I didn't actually I didn't actually ask for it at all or buy it and these are from a um, plant like a cutting subscription box that I um, 
have opted in for so um basically like i didn't want this i didn't ask for it but this is what i got so um i'm probably going to sell the mistletoe cactus at some point um but for now i'm just going to keep as an, an established like make it established first into soil before thinking about selling it um just to have it for an amount of time i might like it um it's very very weird um i'm not really 100 percent into it right now but i think as it grows maybe maybe like it's just it's a it's a it's a there's a chance but i doubt it because it's a cactus so yeah i'm just gonna carry on taking this off and be right back once i've taken both uh of the stacking off both cuttings so here are the roots for the mistletoe cacti oh my gosh look how many roots are it's absolutely crazy um there is still a little bit of sphagnum on like the roots i think for all of the propagations just because um it's just quite difficult to get like all like the bits of sphagnum off but it, it won't really matter as long as you get like the majority of it off and i just want to show you guys look there are some new growth so this long bit here is all new growth and there's a little bit of new growth like right there as you can see it's crazy like they come in like a really light um green and it just like fades to like dark green but yeah it's really crazy like i saw into like yeah it definitely has enough roots and the last but not least i have a hoya pubicalyx cutting this cutting is absolutely massive like the whole of this is just one long stem i didn't really think about this when like propagating it but you know i don't think it particularly matters as such if i need to i will just like cut it up and you know let's just see let's just see what we got here because um i don't know what i'm gonna be doing yet but i've got so much so much sphagnum that has literally come out from this it's crazy so yeah, we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We've got to be really careful because this one has like um, new growth here and then there's one there. And I think that's really cool because none of my like, I don't think I've like left any of like my propagations long enough for it to like grow like leaves because um, I tend to pop mine up as soon as I get enough roots. Um, but obviously I've just kept these ones like long enough for them to start giving me some new um roots but as you can see right here this whole thing is just a really long stem so i think it's just really really cool how like it's just all rooted all along here so yeah i'm gonna take it off check look at the roots and we'll see what we're gonna do potting this one up so here we have this mass like root system going on all along this whole stick it was just this one leaf which i then um just basically dumped in the sphagnum and it's just given me like two new root like leaf growths and this mass long root growth so i'm gonna do because i want to pot it in just like one of these small pots i'm gonna cut this in half so i think i'm going to cut it uh here I'm just thinking, yeah. So I'm just going to cut it just straight in the middle, dead center, like that. So we have two little um, Hoya pubicalyx cuttings. And now let's get on to the potting up. So I've got the pots. I'm just going to fill them up. I'm going to fill them up halfway. So I've got some potting mix some houseplant potting mix that i got off of amazon um it's just regular houseplant potting mix um, nothing particularly special it's got perlite and ceramicis in it so it's pretty good so i'm i will link that down below if you guys are interested in checking it out i put all my plants in it and they're all thriving so well so i do recommend it if you do not want to spend a lot of money on um you know making your own so yeah, I'm just going to halfway up and I'll get back to you when I've done all of them. So I filled up all the pots. I'm going to start off with my Australis Lisa first, as you can see. I'm going to probably fill it up a little bit more because I don't think I put enough in. And I'm just going to pop it straight on top. 
So I'm just gonna have a handful of soil, which I have in a bag down here. There we go. Literally just fill up pretty much all the way. Just how the how I've like done the cutting, it it has a lot of roots at the bottom. And then what we do is I'm just gonna put it on top like that and then just press the roots in just a little bit, just a tiny bit, just press it into the soil so then they just flatten down. And then I will put some soil over the top of that. I'm going to be covering the stem, just leaving the leaves in. I'm just going to hopefully you can see that. Put a bit of soil in, as you can see there. And then I'm basically just going to just tap it in, covering all the roots. And there we have it. So I potted up my Australis Lisa. So the next plant I am going to pot up will be, I'm going to make it a mistletoe cactus this time. So I've got two of them, so I'm just going to be potting them both up together like so. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to have them leaning to the side. So like that, because I don't think they're going to want to stay upright. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in. So at the behind them, there's going to be a big space. I'm just going to fill in behind them so they have something to rest on. Um, so it just makes it easier for me to then cover the roots and put, put soil in around the rest of the plants. Just doing this makes it a lot easier. Then... I've just rested that in as you can see right there and now I'm just going to grab some more soil to then cover these roots up as you can see here just going to cover the roots nicely all the way up put the remaining bits of soil around the plants and then there we go we have now successfully potted up this mistletoe cactus. Just pressing the soil down just so that I can then fill in the gravel at the end. Uh, next we're going to do this longer folio right here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with the Australis leaf. So I'm just going to cut off this, cut off the end here just like so because it won't all fit in so i'm just gonna make sure that does yep that all fits in nicely so i'm just gonna fill it up again all the way up to the top this pot because i've just realized that the hoy is going to be too far down into the pot so just to make sure it sat right on top nicely so i've just filled the pot in like that pop the pop the cutting in on top make sure i just press down all these roots being very careful of the new growth which is right here we do not want to break the new hoya leaves because they are so delicate like never touch new hoya leaves because they will just instantly break off and i've had that before um with my matured australis so that's my big one which is literally got a tendril tendril um growing all along the wall and the ceiling which is absolutely crazy so yeah, never touch a, a like a baby hoya leaf because it will snap off. So I'm doing my very best to make sure that I don't knock it because then it just it just breaks it off and now we've lost a hoya leaf. There we go. We have nicely potted up this hoya. And the last but not least, we got these two hoya pubercalyx cuttings to pot up. So firstly, I'm going to put a bit more soil in this pot. The reason why I only filled them up halfway because I wasn't particularly sure how much soil I want to put in each pot because all the cuttings are different. 
and it just depends on how like big the cutting where the roots are and just um how i'm gonna place the cutting in the pot so it just all really depends so i'm just gonna i'm resting this one on top like this i think i'm gonna be potting this little one up um just i guess on the side so i'm gonna put it up in the side right here so i've just made like a little hole in the soil i'm just gonna pop this little leaf cutting i think i might actually take out the soil so i'm just looking at it and as you can see it probably will do better if it rests on the side like that so if i just fill that hole in again press down the soil that i already have it in then i'm just going to rest it on the side I place it in and I'm just going to rest it like that as you can see and then with this one I'm going to do exactly the same and I'm going to do it right next to it so it looks like that just press the roots slightly into the soil so they just kind of stay down and then I'm just going to grab some soil and start filling it up And here we go, we've got a really cute little Hoi Pupa Calyx cutting. Look how tiny that leaf is, it's absolutely crazy. Like I never thought that this would ever happen, but yeah. So I have potted up all of these cuttings and now I just need to fill the top of the soil with some aquatic gravel. So yeah, let's do that. So I've got this aquatic gravel from Amazon, it's very cheap, it's like 9 quid, 8 quid or so and I will link that down below if you're interested. Anything I link below, any items I link below that you can buy, I do not get any benefits from at all, I just link it because I think it'd be useful for you guys if you want something cheap but looks good and is worth it. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill up the top layer of the soil, just like the very top with gravel. And all I do is I just basically just fill it up and just press it down, try not to leave any holes at all so that no fungus gnats can get into the soil layers and just make, just, just you know, cause a havoc within your plants. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do and I'll be right back in a second. Look how beautiful these cuttings are. Now they've got the gravel in and they are going to be fungus gnat free. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!